Zone Max Tomcat. I've put it through its paces the past little while. Physically, it's very solid. I, it feels honestly more like a Pro Blaster. Has a very good stock. It extends. It's solid. It's not going to go anywhere. If you extend it, you can put your cheek on the cheek rest if that is your thing. You can also pop it off and you have your end strike attachment point. So with this, you can put on nerf attachments if that strikes your fancy, but I really do like the stock that it comes with. It has a sight here. It's usable. It's more like an iron sight, kind of in the style of maybe like a red dot or something, but it really just uh, works more like an iron sight. I think it's usable. It has a vertical foregrip. It does work pretty good. With this, it does use short darts only. So we do have the shorter pump with no slot. So like with your Nexus Pro, you have the option to put in full length darts or short darts. So when you're using the short darts, you have a little extra play that's there for the accommodation of the full length darts. So this being short darts, um, it has that shorter pump. The main unique point on the Tomcat over other dart zone like pro level blasters is its 50 dart drum. It's half length darts, which is a first, um, yeah, it's the first on the shelf blaster um, with a short dart drum. Um, it's got a 50 round capacity. The darts are stacked. That's got pretty good uh, capacity. You have to slide your first round of darts in these lower holes here and then you can fill the second dart for each section up above. With that, you have to kind of be careful of how you're putting in those darts uh, from above because it's really easy to flex the darts. Uh, they'll wear a little quicker. But once you get used to it, you can put them in with very minimal amount of flexing. At first I was like, oh. but yeah, now I can put them in without issue. When you have a blaster primed, you can rotate this pretty freely. So if you need to adjust it while you're in a match, you can prime it and then kind of move it where you want and then put it forward. And when you have it forward, it locks it in place because the reason why we can get such a good performance from this blaster compared to other blasters that use drums is rather than the air pressure coming out right here, it actually pushes the dart through and chambers it and connects with a barrel just like you would in a blaster that uses a magazine. You get that performance of a mag-fed blaster, but with a drum, uh, which is pretty awesome. If I haven't had any jams or malfunctions, this is definitely one of my favorite dart zone blasters so far. Style-wise, I think it's pretty cool. It does have a muzzle attachment. I actually don't think I prefer it without the muzzle attachment, but it does give you that extra orange when you have that. It just friction fits. It's strong enough that it shouldn't fall out during use. The only downside to the style of the muzzle attachment on here is unless somebody makes something custom that sits flush on this, you're not gonna be able to just throw on a scar barrel. From what I've seen, the accuracy is pretty good. I'll be showing that. But if you are hoping to improve the accuracy of the blaster, the grip is comfortable for me. I have a medium size hand. So it fits my hand pretty good. It feels like it would be comfortable with a large hand as well. The trigger is nice and short. Uh, there's not a ton of play to that. I really do like the looks of this blaster. I think it looks really cool. Definitely goes along with what you'd expect from a pro blaster from what we've seen so far. I'm going to show you some accuracy footage that I did earlier on as well as our ref readings so you know what to expect if you buy this blaster.
that dart zone wants you to put the darts in on this to avoid damaging them on the upper row is you put the back in, make sure you push it in as far as you can, and then with your finger just on the rubber part, squeeze it through. And then you should be able to, once you've done enough and kind of get used to it, you should be able to pop them in without too much um, flex on them. And you can see with that, I'm not, I'm not bending it hardly at all. So it's in all the way and then boop. Yeah, so in conclusion, uh, I love this blaster, honestly. It's solid. The way that Dart Zone does its color separation is not using paint. It's separated by plastic, so you could take this apart, paint the pieces separately. I haven't disassembled it yet. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with the performance so far. I would rather have some sort of aluminum hardware in it rather than using something 3D printed. So I'm curious to see what Worker comes out with. They're usually pretty good at, in pretty short order, coming out with some upgrade parts for popular blasters like this is likely going to be. The only downside for me in Canada is we don't have Target here anymore. So the only place that Dart Zone sells these in Canada is on Amazon. And unfortunately here, they're charging pretty much double, if not more, the price over the US. It's usually just the exchange. I would recommend this for anybody that wants an off-the-shelf blaster that gets pretty competitive level performance. If you're in a game where your FPS cap is 200, this is great. I was hitting in the 180s usually, sometimes above that. There's not many downsides. For the grip, this does work fine. I do prefer an angled foregrip, uh, as long as it's in your price range. If you're looking for a performance blaster off the shelf that you can probably upgrade later, I could definitely recommend this, both from just a logical level and from my own opinion. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more content, uh, just give me a subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's something in particular you want to see or if you have any feedback. Thanks guys.